Hello once again. I'll now show you some of the basic features that BSoft 4 has and also how to print the part that you will need to repair the machine. First of all, you will need to connect to the machine using this button. In order to do so, make sure the printer is connected to the power, it's turned on and the USB cable is connected to the computer. Then press this button. If this connecting uh, does not disappear and show as ready, like here, you should restart uh, both the computer and the printer in order to make sure everything connects correctly. First of all, let's run through the maintenance options. Here you have the change filament option. Here the one uh, you already did this on our Skype meeting. Here you can change the filament and remove the filament you have right now or place a new one. For this you'll need to select the brand of the filament here on top and then select the kind of filament. For example, your yellow filament is MCPP PLA, so you should select this option. After this, the printer will heat up. You'll have to wait a little while while the heating procedure completes. Once the heating is complete, you should press the next button. Here you have two options. The unload option is meant to remove the filament you have inside the machine. The load option is meant to place filament inside the extruder. In order to remove the filament you have inside the machine, <clears throat> you should uh, pull on the filament, like shown here on the image, and press the unload button. The filament should do a couple of movements and then become loose. In order to load the filament, you have to do the reverse. You should push the filament into the machine until you feel some resistance. Then press the load button while keep uh, while you keep applying a small pressure on the filament inside uh, towards the inside of the machine. This will help the machine load the filament. Once done, press the OK button. This will save the current filament uh, on the memory of the machine. Next, you have the Calibrate Now option. This will calibrate the print bed relative to the nozzle. You should place a piece of paper, like you, like you see here, between the bed and the nozzle, and adjust the bed upwards or downwards until you have a good resistance on the paper. You should feel the paper dragging, but the paper should not be stuck in place. Once this is done, please uh, memorize the amount of strength you are applying on a paper. 
Right now, you'll need to replicate the same resistance using the thumb screws you have on the bottom of the bed. On this first step, you adjust the screw on the left when the printer is seen from the front. On the third step, you do the, the, um, the screw on the right. Please make sure all three points have the same resistance on the paper, otherwise you'll have bad printing uh, results. Once you finish calibrating, you should do a calibration test. If the calibration comes out successfully, you should have a straight and continuous line around the bed. If it has small holes or gaps or some stray filaments that came loose, you should re uh, repeat the calibration procedure. If you repeat the calibration procedure and it does not work, it might be time to change the, the tape on top of the bed, as it might be too dirty to adhere to plastic. Next, you have the extruder maintenance option. This one allows you to solve clogs on the nozzle. You, sh you only need to do this if you have any print issues. And you should only do this if you have the maintenance kit that has special needles to clean the nozzle. You can also switch the nozzle to a bigger size or to a new nozzle. That is in case you have a clog that cannot be fixed with the maintenance kit. Or if you're going to put a print TPU flex like shown here. TPU is a flexible material and it only prints with the larger diameter nozzles. Um, as you won't be switching nozzle right now, we won't be going through the procedure, but it's pretty simple. The machine heats up, then it asks you to remove the old nozzle, and then asks you to put in the new nozzle and shows you how to tighten it. The calibrate extruder option allows you to improve the, um, the precision of the printed parts. It is not necessary to be done to print, but it should be done once you're, you get the hang of the machine. Right now, you should have this option show up once you turn on the machine because it's not calibrated. You can press the cancel button in order to skip this step. Right now, we will load the item that I'll send you on the email. This is part of the spool holder and you'll need to print a new part in order to fix it. So to import a model, you press the import model option and select the STL file or drag the STL file into BSoft. The item should show on the center of the bed, like shown here. Uh, here you can manipulate the item in several ways. You can move it left to right, top to bottom, and up and down. If you move the item up and down, you should make sure the item does not float above the build surface, like shown here as this will cause multiple print issues. You should always place on bed and center the item after any motion. Next, you can scale the item. This is useful if you want to increase the size of an object or if the item is incorrectly sized. You can either size it by absolute means using the size of the item or relative means using percentages. For example here, let's uh, double the size of the item. As you can see, the item is too big and has gone below the print surface. As such, it's, so, it's shown as red. You should always place on bed and center object after doing any manipulations to the item. I will revert that to, to 100% as this part must be printed with the actual size. Always place on bed and center object. You can also rotate the item in order to place it in a different position. You can either rotate it here using the, the knobs, or you can rotate it here using the axis and these buttons. <coughs> As you can see here, the item is very tilted and you should not try and print objects like this. If this happens, you should delete the item and place it once again. Here you have a shortcut of the last item you add, but if it does not show here, you can always drag and drop or press import model again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you're going to print multiple instances of the same item, you should use this button, close an item. This will make a copy of the item. As you can see here, the item just went outside of the print bed and as such is shown as red. 
To fix this, you need to move it inside the bed. If, for example, you're going to print multiple instances of these three items, you should save this as an STL. The STL is nothing more than the name you give to the 3D models that you can 3D print. For example, let's call it three times spool holder. As you can see here, you have that item here, and you can add multiple instances of these three items already packed. This is useful if you're going to make a big production. Right now, we are going to place this one item, so we need to clear the bed. You have an option here, clear platform. This will take everything out. We can now add the spool holder item, just one of them, on the original size, without rotations or movements. Make sure the item is placed on bed and centered. And after this, you can press the print option here on the bottom right. Here you have multiple print options. The first one is resolution. This means how high each, each layer of the print will be. The thicker the resolution, the faster it will print, but less details will show up. The higher the resolution, the more time it will take, but it will have a better resolution. Usually 0 0.2 is a good sweet spot between uh, time and quality. Here you can select how much plastic goes inside the part. For example, 5% of the part will be filled on the inside, 10%, 20 and 40. Usually 10 and 5% are the most used options as they have a good resistance without using too much plastic. 20 or 40% are only needed for very high resistance parts. Platform adhesion helps you uh, helps parts with weird shapes grab onto the surface. For example, the brim places small lines of plastic around the base that touches the build plate. This will help the part st uh, stick to the build plate more firmly. The raft will print an entire uh, piece of plastic on the bottom, which will grab onto the plate, and then the part will be printed on top of that piece of plastic. Usually, you do not need any adhesion unless you have, you're having trouble printing a part. The support material is used to print parts like, for example, this tilted cube shown here. As you can see, the, the cube would only touch on this small tip on the bottom, and this would cause some print issues. As such, you need supports to hold the, the walls. You have two options, touching platform that only touches from the build plate to the object, but not from the object itself to its top. Like shown here, on everywhere, everything is supported. Touching platform only supports the bottom of the item. Usually this is enough for most uses. Only very complex shapes need the everywhere option. For this part, we'll select 0.2, 10%, none, and none. After selecting all of the, all of the settings, you can press the estimate button. This will give you an estimation of how much time it will take to print. Uh, your time might be a little different, different because the machine I'm using here has a 0 0.6 nozzle, a thicker nozzle, so it prints a little faster. After seeing how much plastic you'll use and making sure you have enough plastic, you can pre press print. <coughs> the printer will now transfer the file uh, and start printing on its own. If you have any issues uh, while printing or have any doubt about this procedure, feel free to contact us.